3rd, 2014. Let's all rise with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a period of silent meditation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with LB 898, a copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted at the back of the chamber. The order of business of the City Council is as follows. The clerk will call the items listed on the agenda under public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on an item should come forward after the clerk reads that item. The applicant and those in favor should speak first, then those opposed. The applicant may then make one short rebuttal. Each speaker should begin by stating name, address, and whether you're speaking in favor of or in opposition to the item. Please spell your name for us if it looks like it could be in the least way complicated. Testimony is limited to five minutes per speaker. After all public hearings, the council will vote on resolutions and items listed under third reading. On the second and last meeting of the month, immediately prior to the adjournment, anyone may speak on any issue not on the agenda for that date, nor plan for a future agenda. Teresa, call the first item, please. All right, just a reminder that due to the Veterans Day holiday, there will be no city council meeting on Monday, November 10th. And due to the Thanksgiving holiday, there will be no city council meeting on Monday, December 1st. Our public hearing consent agenda are items one through eight. Anybody would like to speak to these items? Staff questions? Next item, please. All right, we can vote on these items. Items two, four, five, and six were introduced by camp. So moved. Second. Seconded by Roy. Discussion, call the roll. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Motion carried, seven to zero. Next is our public hearing liquor resolutions. Those giving testimony are asked to come forward Raise their right hand for the clerk to administer the oath. After the oath, witnesses shall state their names and addresses. Applicants or witnesses are not required to stay for the voting session. I'll call item nine, manager application of Chad Parker for Sam's Club at 4900 North 27th Street. Good afternoon. Do you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the truth, the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? I do. Thank you. Chad Parker uh, reside at uh, 2061 North 91st Street in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. Any questions? Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself or about the business? And uh, recently named to the club manager, been in position in Lincoln for 90 days. Prior to that, I was a store manager um, in position in Davenport, Iowa, on the eastern side of the state. Uh, been with the company 18 years and excited to be part of the Lincoln community. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Thank you. Next item, please. Eighty Andermatt Drive. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? I do. Thank you. Again, my name is Marvin Schumacher. I'm the club manager at uh, Sam's Club at 8480 Andermatt Drive. Have been there uh, two years in June. Been with the company 13 years. My address 4221 Mohawk, Lincoln 68510. Anybody? Carl. Yes, uh, thanks for being here. W were you at Sam's when they first opened the, that's this location? No, I did not open this location. I was previously, uh, I was in Council Bluffs, Iowa, running that club. I have been at this club for a year in June. Okay, so you missed, missed the fun when missed we... The fun <laughs> okay, me. all right, thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? Thank you. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Staff questions, next item please. All right, I'll call items 11 and 12. They're the application of Rupert Enterprises, LLC, doing business as T Stop and Shop for a Class B liquor license at 2801 O Street and the related manager application of Terry Rupert. Do you raise your hands, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? I do. Thank you. 
Patrick T. O'Brien representing Mr. Rupert. Terry is applying for a liquor license at a uh, convenience store in 28th and O. Previously held liquor licenses in the state of Nebraska has a good record with the liquor commission. We'd ask approval of the license. Okay. So, Kyle. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rupert, you're, as I remember, I think, you're the rib guy. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, okay. Is our ribs going to be any part of what you're, you do? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> Ms. Rupert says here you have not been through the training, required training. Have you scheduled it? I have scheduled it. Okay. Uh, yeah. November the 3rd for, for the city training, and I already have a Nebraska. We have, we have an extra one here in town that you have to pass it. Mm -hmm. Did you say November 3rd? We'll see you there this evening. Oh, the 13th, excuse me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, one of us is going to be confused. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much. Anybody who'd like to speak this item? Staff questions? Next item, please. All right, next I'll call item 13, manager application of Christine Jackson for Fuzzy's Taco Shop at 1442 O Street. Anybody here would like to speak to this item? Great. Uh, anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to this item? Next item, please. All right, next would be item 14, application of Janelli Sanchez Vargas doing business as Cielto Lindo for a Class I liquor license at 100 North 1st Street, Suite 1. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? Thank you. Well, I'm Janelle Sanchez. I reside at 5421 Westlington Avenue. Um, I'm here for Cielito Lindo. Okay. Do um, you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Yep. It's a new business. Um, we previously worked with like another family businesses here in town for about 14 years. And now I opened up my own shop um, on First and O and trying to get some uh, alcohol. <laughs> so. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, tell us a little more about what, what your uh, yeah. restaurant will be. It's a Mexican restaurant, and we're just going to, like, want to be able to sell, like, just, like, you know, bottled Coronas or stuff like that, just something small. Just uh, it tends to be that a lot of the people do want to drink just the beers, too, when, you know, they're eating, and we want to be able to offer that. Okay. Anybody, anybody else, before you go, you want to, you don't want to pronounce that since we probably have oh. butchered your, the title. <laughs> Cielito Lindo. Okay. Sounds a lot better when you say yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? <clears throat> Staff questions? Next item, please. All right, I'll call items 15 and 16 together. They're the application of MG Enterprises, LLC, doing business as The Alley, for a Class C liquor license at 1031 M Street and the related manager application of Matthew Moore. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you barely believe it to be? Yes. Thank you. I'm Matthew Moore. I reside at 3327 Mohawk Street here in Lincoln. I recently purchased the alley as of, I took ownership as of October 6th. Roy. Um, I have a letter from the chief of police basically stating that your liquor license application uh, failed to disclose uh, driving under the influence, first offense, having an open container on a different occasion, on a different occasion, maintaining a disorderly house, um, making a, a different occasion, making a false statement to police. Um, and these were not on your app liquor license application. And uh, you were advised uh, to file an amendment to your liquor license application with the State of Nebraska Liquor Control Commission. Have you done that? Yes, I have. It was a miscommunication in between myself and the firm who handled the transaction in the first place with the initial liquor application. Could you explain that? Uh, the firm is a business brokerage in Omaha and they helped with the sale of the bar to me from the previous owners and I did explain to them what, I, what my past has been and for some reason it just wasn't listed and I did file an amendment and my attorney is Mark Folson and he took care of all of that. They filled this out for you? They filled your application out for you? They handled a majority of the application 
um, process for me. It's part of how they help with the transition of the sale of the bar. Okay. You, you said you took possession in early October. Mm -hmm. So it's completed. What if, if your license was not granted, does that void the contract or? In a sense, I do believe so, yes. Anybody else? Well, I would certainly go back to that company and <clears throat> have a discussion um, because if it says you have to disclose everything, that probably means you have to disclose everything. Um, one, two, three. Uh, they missed five things, um, four of which um, are fairly serious in terms of liquor violations. Um, so, um, okay. Anybody else with a question? All right. Okay. Anybody like to speak to this item? Staff question? Yeah, I'll do it. Conan Schaefer, investigator with the Lincoln Police Department. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you barely believe it to be? I do. Thank you. Could you give us some background on those offenses and your investigation of this application? Um, yes, just regarding uh, my investigation into um, the criminal history of Mr. Moore, um, I was able to discover that there were items that were not disclosed um, on the liquor license, um, and those were provided to um, the chief of police and the ones that Mr. Christensen had read off the, um, and some of those excluded him from other applications. Uh, the false information to a police officer um, falls into the realm of uh, uh, providing false information to government agencies. Um, and I did have an interview with Mr. Moore regarding the nature um, specifically of that um, violation and he indicated to me that he did not recall the specifics of it so wasn't able to speak in depth with me about it um, and then the, the others and I did not receive any information um, at the time of that letter that an amendment had been filed with the Liquor Commission um, either from the, the Liquor Commission or from Mr. Moore so I, I get, I'm in the dark on that the city clerk's office has not received an amendment to the application either. Okay. Am I right in understanding we do have one DUI listed or disclosed on the application, but then you found additional violations? Um, Is that how this worked? I, I would have to uh, approach Mr. Christensen to uh, take a look at Here's the letter. letter. Yeah. <clears throat> So the, the one DUI um, was the one violation that he did disclose. And that's from January in 2009, and the other violations are from time periods since 2009, more recent times, is that correct? Um, correct. Uh, uh, open container was 2011. Uh, maintaining a disorderly house was 2010. Uh, false statement to a police officer or false reporting was 2010. And um, then a traffic violation was uh, previous to all of that. Any other questions? But there was some awareness of the need to disclose, but not a complete disclosure offered. Um, that's correct. And it, and I don't. <coughs> I, I know that at least a portion of that application. I would have to take a look at the complete application again to see um, what was handwritten and what may have been typed. So I don't know how. Um, I was under the impression that Mr. Moore was the one that had completed it, but I don't know for sure. What, was Mr. Moore's signature required at the, on that document? Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Next item, please. 
All right, I'll call item 17, application of MLogic Holdings, LLC, doing business as Tilted Kilt, to expand its Class I liquor license to add an outdoor area for a new license description as a one-story building, approximately 72 feet by 79 feet, including an outdoor area, approximately 37 feet by 47 feet at 6100 O Street. Right, would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, my name is Teresa Carrera. I'm at 6100 Vine Street, Q81, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68505. And I'm here on behalf of Tilt to Kill. I'm the new assistant general manager. I've been with the company for six months. And this is just to, our previous liquor license did not include the patio, so we're just seeking an amendment to cover it. How do you spell your last name? C-A-R-R-E-R-A. -R -R -E Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions? Just for clarification, this is not a new area. The patio has been there and been used. It, it just got missed when we made the it did. previous correction. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody would like to speak to this item? Staff questions? Next item, please. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make some motions here on these liquor applications. I would uh, move approval of items 9, 10, 11, 12, and 17. 14. 14. Oh, I'm, yes, 14, yes, 14. thank you. Yeah, 14. 14. Thank you. And 17. 17. Yes. 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 17. Correct. I'll have further motions in a moment. Second by Roy. Discussion? Call roll. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Barrett? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. And Mr. Chair, on item 13, I would move for uh, continuing that to our next hearing on two weeks from today. Second. Second by Trent. Discussion? Um, and basically, if the just, individual didn't appear. So yeah, we'll just for office. information, um, our policy is that you have to appear. Um, so if, if there are questions to be asked, you're here and available for for questions. Our, our policy has been pretty standard that we we just hold it back and give that person another opportunity to appear. To check if the timeline was fine. There's no timeline on manager applications. Oh, thank you. Okay. Questions? Call roll. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. And Mr. Chair, I'd move a denial of items 15 and 16. Second. Second. By Roy. Discussion? I would just say I, I think we need to have full disclosure. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, Mr. Moore didn't have that on the application or whatever, but it, you know, it's important that we get that through the process when investigations are done. And, uh, Just agree and say that that it doesn't matter who prepares the document for you if you sign it it's your responsibility and it's also I think important when you are signing a document to look through it and make sure that it is complete certainly in areas like that where clearly someone put in one violation but then did not put in these more recent ones so it's hard to see how that was overlooked Carl and I, I agree with my colleagues. Um, you know, we're, we're working really hard to, to have, make sure that all of our facilities are in compliance and, and it's a huge responsibility. Uh, the consequence of this action, should we vote to deny your license, is that it automatically goes to the Liquor C Control Commission and they then will be voting on, on this with a, with a hearing on it. Um, that's all I have. Any other questions? Well, I would say um, that Mr. Moore should be at least commended for the fact that there have no, there are no violations after 2011. So right. clearly, there's been some change. That does not, however, uh, negate the fact that if you're supposed to to um, make it known, that you have to make it known. And so, uh, I, I would have to agree with my colleagues. Call the roll, please. Camp. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Cook. Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. Carrying ordinance's second reading, 
Item 18 is text amendment 14007. This is uh, various amendments to Title 27. Gonna have more time to get up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, good for you. Um, I was gonna say what more can I add, but now I have to add something. <laughs> This is, this is um, you know, every couple of years we have collected um, enough information about errors or omissions or conflicts between one section of this ordinance and another. It's 400 pages long and very complicated. Anything to do with it is very complicated. There were, um, but there is nothing in here that changes the regulation of land. This is all intended to be a clarification or a correction. There's a section on appeals and there are some cases where the city council has the right of appeal of an administrative decision or a planning commission action. There are other places in the ordinance where inadvertently it had been omitted. There's no place where the mayor has an opportunity for appeal and he noticed that and thought he ought to be treated like other elected officials, and I don't disagree with that. So um, if you have any specific questions, I'll try to respond. This Carl. is just, um, it, it, it's an interesting segue, I guess, from uh, liquor uh, hearings to the question of where the first floor is. So I don't know if if there's really a question in that, but uh, I know I didn't find anything in here that, that needed questioning. It's good to hear, thanks. <laughs> question. Larry. Marvin, a couple of years ago, the department spent a lot of time working on the Just sign ordinance, um, different, clarifying, trying to make it very user-friendly. You've got, points in here that address <coughs> types of signs and the regulations. Were there problems or things that were overlooked in the recent review or I, I think in that last in that last change to the to the sign code there were some inadvertent word changes that did affect the way that it was being interpreted. And I'll just briefly so you can see a picture of of this if I can have that slide up. Um, the um, this is a slide of what the best buy. These are not real stores, I don't think. These are, could be. These are slide. this is a slide of what the best buy store on North 48th Street might look like if it was subdivided into multiple tenants. It's a pretty large space, I think it's about 70,000 square feet. And so this is the south portion of one building. That building stretches out another oh, 500 or 700 feet further to the north. And it's not two buildings, although it may look like it from the from the street, it's actually, according to Building and Safety, one building. And the way that the language had been written, it said you can't have more than 500 square feet of sign area on a building. Well, Best Buy had more than 500 square feet of sign area themselves. They had a sign here and they had a sign here. It was, I think, appropriate in scale, just like this proposed sketch of what these signs are gonna look like, I think are appropriate in scale to the nature of these buildings, large buildings, well back on the street, and so visibility is an issue. Um, but um, building and safety, looking at how to interpret that, said, oh, well, there's already more than 500 square feet to the north of this same building, so I'm sorry, you can't have any signs at all. And that didn't make a lot of sense, and obviously it wasn't interpreted previously that way because Best Buy did have signs. So we recalled, I recall that, that the intent was to say, 500 square feet for any one sign. And then beyond that, there's a percentage of the total sign area of a building to make sure that they're, you don't just completely wrap a building in, in signage. And so that was the change from 500 square feet of sign area to 500 square feet for any one sign. Each of these signs is 200 to 250 square feet. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? <coughs> Any further staff questions? Next item, please. All right, I'll call item 19, amending the pay schedule for the employee group whose classifications are assigned to the pay range prefixed by the letter C 
to change the pay range of utility supervisor from a C26 to C28. Good afternoon, Council. Doug McDaniel, Human Resources. Uh, the position of utility supervisor is represented by the LCEA union. They supervise PAGE employees. Uh, recent negotiations with PAGE union moved the senior water technician, one of the positions that this utility supervisor oversees, moves the pay range up to 2131 as a minimum and 2689 as a maximum. This resulted in a difference between the supervisor and the subordinate position of 0.25 cents. So uh, we are looking at uh, raising this supervisory position from a C26 to a C28. Uh, this is at the request of the uh, Public Works Department. Human Resources concurs. The total impact is around $22,000. Questions? Thank you. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Next item, please. Item 20, amending the pay schedule for the employee group whose classifications are assigned to the pay range prefixed by the letter E to create the classification of human resources generalist. This request is a new position that is being requested by the Human Resources Department itself. Uh, it will replace a vacant clerical support position that we've held open for several years. Uh, the position is in the budget. The intent is to have a professional level position available uh, to rotate through the certain areas at peak loads or peak times uh, that will uh, then alleviate some of our customer service issues. Any, any questions? Okay. Anybody would like to speak to this item? Next item, please. Next would be item 21, amending section 2.76.400 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to leaves of absence without pay to provide that leave without pay shall not be granted to accept other employment. Council, what we're trying to do here is uh, seek an amend amendment to the code uh, in 2.76.400. Uh, that clarifies that unpaid leaves of absence will not be granted for the purposes of accepting other employment. Recently, we've had uh, three requests for travel and study, uh, only to discover after the fact that individuals accepted other employment. Uh, so we do not intend this language to prohibit someone from accepting an internship with a stipend, as we would see that to be educational in nature. But it's not the intent that we would grant an unpaid leave of absence for people to accept employment outside of the, the city. Sure. Yeah, Mr. Daniels, how, you know, since you understood after the fact on these three incidences, how likely would you be able to tell that somebody's asking for a leave of absence uh, for other purposes? Well, I think, you know, that's an excellent question, Mr. Camp. Um, I think, you know, our uh, sources tend to keep us informed as to what the intentions of people are. And uh, so one situation was denied uh, because we subsequently received a, a referral check on the person. Mm -hmm. So the two handed in, hand in hand. Uh, the others were after the fact, but again, uh, um, uh, LinkedIn is a wonderful source of finding out information. And so as we network with one another, uh, it comes to light that people are, are finding other employment. So I think our chances are pretty good. Okay. And so the alternative would be if an individual were asking for a leave of absence to seek other employment that you would just terminate them instead or well we would deny it uh, the, the leave and they would you know make a decision if they want to stay employed with with the city or if they want to seek new opportunities okay. thank you any other questions okay thank you anybody would like to speak to this item next item please Next is our public hearing resolutions, item 22, approving an agreement between the city and the Lincoln Chamber Economic Development Corporation for the promotion of economic development in Lincoln for a two-year term. The agenda it does say three-year, but the agreement is really for a two-year term commencing September 1st, 2014 through August 31st, 2016. Michael Lang from the Mayor's Department. Over the last several years, Lincoln's really been blessed with a strong economy, not only in terms of investment, but job creation as well. I feel a lot of that success been, can be attributed to the relationship we have with the Lincoln Chamber Economic Development Corporation. 
And this is a joint <coughs> agreement. We're asking your, for your approval for funding for a two-year term to support the operation of the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development. We work closely with LPED, as they're known. That's the acronym. And LPED is vital to moving economic development forward in this community. There are several programs in which uh, we, you know, coordinate and cooperate closely on, including business retention and expansion efforts, marketing and attraction, certainly entrepreneurial development, which has come a long ways over the last several years, and the overall community competitiveness factor in terms of being familiar with, you know, our strengths, our weaknesses, and kind of how we stack up in the national and global economy. Uh, you know, basically all the city departments at one time or another work closely with LPED in some way and we all touch projects together and, and that's an important facet because really economic development is what I'd call a team sport. Um, knowing each other, going out on business calls together and really cooperating on planning our annual program of projects is essentially helping us to determine what the community needs in the future in order to continue our ongoing success. So I strongly recommend that you uh, support this two-year agreement and uh, Wendy and Pat and her staff are great to work with and we really appreciate the fine work that they do in the community. Do you have any questions? Mike, I think it's fairly, it's fair to say that what we really have is uh, uh, this is a mutual benefit and that's why we've decided that it, if we vote for this in the past budgets we have we have had this uh, this group uh, project because it's mutually beneficial is that fair that's correct it's actually I, I was trying to dig up a little history in this relationship from what I can tell through the city clerk's office it dates back to 1996 I know since our administration has come on board we've worked closely to not only streamline processes but to further kind of hone and refine our agreement <clears throat> that kind of really works uh, to both of our advantages and putting us more closely together in terms of, you know, frequency of business calls, reporting, strategic planning, you know, the initiatives that can really make a difference in Lincoln going forward. And you know they're old. If they, if they predate John and Jonathan, you know they're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any, anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Go ahead, Wendy. You bet. Good afternoon, uh, Councilman Emery and other council members. I'm Wendy Birdsell. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce and the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development. I'm joined by Pat Haverty, who is the vice president of the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development. Um, and we are both representing the Chamber and the Lincoln Partnership, and we both uh, reside, or both of those organizations reside at 1135 M Street, Suite 300. And we are appearing today before you in support of this two-year operating agreement between the city and the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development. Um, this uh, public-private partnership really plays a vital role in uh, promoting economic development for our city. <clears throat> the strong leadership and foresight of our predecessors was really instru instrumental in the creation of this unified economic development effort under the banner of the partnership. And I'm pleased to report to you that our program and our entire community commitment to creating jobs for our citizens has never been greater. And I'd like to thank you for your continued support of the Lincoln Partnership and your commitment to work with us on projects and economic, of economic development issues over the past several years. Uh, during this last contract period, the Council's commitment has helped generate over 3,000 jobs in the Lincoln area and $400 million in new investment. Our budget is really small compared to other communities with whom we compete regularly on projects to either retain, uh, to, to, to garner new projects or just to retain the, the, uh, the companies that we have currently in the community. Uh, we really feel like we're able to operate more efficiently through our cooperative efforts with the Chamber and the Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, leveraging our resources in, within our community and, and with state partners as well. Uh, by approving this commitment or this contract, the cancel, Council is not only providing funds for economic opportunity, but you're all, all also leveraging an additional 500000 through our private sector partners. Uh, the partnership is really a true example uh, of a unique uh, private, part, par, private 
public-private partnership. That's not easy to say. I'm going to have you all do that once or twice. Um, a pr true private-public partnership <laughs> that works. Uh, we've been very pleased working with our working relationship with the mayor's office and his staff. As Mike has said, uh, the reason uh, it has worked so well is because we do have a great re relationship and are able to work through multiple issues very, very rapidly. I know Pat has a couple of things that he'd like to mention as well. Sure. Uh, Pat Haverty, I'm the Vice President of Economic Development for the Lincoln Partnership. And um, Mike did a really nice job of, of talking about uh, the great relationship that we have with the city. Uh, he also touched on really our four core areas that we work in, business retention expansion, which is uh, really important and that's the main focus of our organization. About 90% of your primary job growth at a minimum comes from uh, the businesses uh, that are already existing in your community expanding. Uh, innovation and entrepreneurship over the last several years, we have made uh, huge strides and uh, made a real emphasis, point of emphasis on the innovation and entrepreneurship side. We have a full-time staff member dedicated to that. We also <laughs> contribute a significant amount of money of our budget back into uh, supporting the entrepreneur community here in Lincoln. Uh, business attraction, which is probably gets the most press of uh, anything that we do, uh, it's, but uh, uh, that's a very important piece, of, continues to be an important piece of what we do. However, it's not the main focus of the organization. And Mike touched on it a little bit. We call it community competitiveness. How does Lincoln stack up against the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the country, the rest of the world? And uh, we have a team of folks. Uh, we share resources with the chamber, and we work on those issues to make sure that we are in the best competitive position that we can be. You know, obviously, economic development is an important activity for any community. Uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to jobs in our community and ask that you provide, approve the contract for economic development services as presented here. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Larry. I just wanted to say thank you for all the work you do with the city. It seems like it's hard to open up the paper without seeing a picture of you and the mayor cutting a ribbon. Um, <laughs> Those are good things. We've right. had a record number of ribbon yeah. cuttings this year, too. Absolutely. Um, following up on what you said, Pat, you mentioned identifying sort of our strengths and weaknesses uh, with, compared to other cities. I noticed there's a, a one-time expense of 150000 that will be dedicated for a study. Can you tell us more about the study and what you hope more specifically to, to glean from that and how you guys will put that to use? Let me take yeah. that. Okay. Um, um, in 2002, uh, Angelou Economics came to Lincoln and they did a, uh, a study for the community. And what it did was it uh, looked at strengths, weaknesses, where the community needs to go. They did an update. Uh, and the partnership was really strengthened from that. Um, we're looking at doing another type of Angelou study. Uh, we're going to engage a number of stakeholders uh, and community leaders, and we're going to uh, uh, try to look for that, what's next for Lincoln. We've had so many great things that have gone on, and so what, what do we need to do next to uh, be competitive and uh, continue to have a great city and keep the momentum going that we've got. And so uh, we sent out an RFP. We sent it out to six firms that we had uh, went out in the economic development world and uh, looked for uh, folks who would recommend consultants who had done this type of work. We sent out six RFPs. We just recently got back four of those responses. And we've got a small committee uh, in our organization that's now taking a look at those, and we're going to decide which which one of those uh, consultants is going to do this study. It'll probably be about a six months study, and they'll come back out with a strategy plan, uh, steps for moving forward. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak to this item? Staff questions? Next item, please. All right, I'll go on to item 23, approving an interlocal agreement between the city and Lancaster County for a joint data processing division to update and revise the information services division and the ISPC and to provide for budgets, cost distribution, billings, projects, and other manage matters. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Steve Henderson with information services. Many of you probably know there is an existing interlocal that addresses how information services delivers technology services both to county and city organizations. In that interlocal, there is a body called the Information Services Policy Committee, the ISPC, uh, created, and we have been working with the ISPC members to develop a set of revisions to that existing interlocal. What you have before you today is the culmination of that effort. I'll speak very quickly to five points in those revisions that might be of interest to you. First, the ISPC will have more 
flexibility to create or retire advisory groups that report to the ISPC as different technology issues arise. Uh, the existing agreement provides for none of that flexibility. Secondly, the, the, excuse me, the revised language shifts the focus on financial matters to information services cost allocation and rate setting work rather than budgeting. Uh, given that we are a city budget, the county members of the ISPC uh, were a little uncertain as to the position to take about budget matters given that it's a process controlled strictly by the city. Third, it introduces the concepts of enterprise projects and provides the ISPC with more oversight of those projects. Enterprise projects will be the largest, most complex, most visible projects that we take on. And with that increased ISPC oversight, it just gives a level of assurance that those projects will be well managed. Fourth, uh, it adds some additional language and specifics about dissolution of assets in the unlikely event that the interlocal would be terminated. And lastly, or fifth, uh, given that it's been approximately 15 years since this document has been touched, it simply revises some of the language in the interlocal agreement to reflect a more contemporary vocabulary about information technology. Uh, with those comments, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions you might have. Questions? Carl. So um, thanks, Steve. The, with the enterprise projects. Yes. Um, golf fund, for example. The golf program, is that, that is one of those that you're talking about? Uh, this would apply, at least at this point, this would apply to projects that Information Services has direct involvement in in terms of development work we are doing. Okay. Uh, if we find ourselves involved with a project where there is a package purchased or an outside um, company is engaged and we're part of that, we certainly would think about designating those projects as an enterprise project. Uh, but if we're not involved with the project, we would have to be aware of the project first before we call for the ISPC yeah. to designate it as an enterprise project. All right. Thanks. Steve, just for information, you want to explain for the, to the public what an inter enterprise project is? At this point in time, there is no definition like that in the existing agreement. The intent is to create a portfolio of projects that uh, the ISPC believes to be extremely critical about either the budgetary elements of the project, the technology involved, or the complexity of the project, such that there's enhanced oversight and management exerted against that project to make sure uh, the very best thought and care is taken to make sure that project's a success. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody who'd like to speak to this item? Next item, please. That would conclude our public hearing. We can move into the voting session. Okay. Public hearing ordinances second reading were items 18 through 21. <clears throat> public hearing resolutions, item 22. Is the agreement between the city and Lincoln Chamber Economic Development Corporation introduced by Gaylor Baird. So moved. Second. Second by Trent. Discussion? Seven one. Did it get clarified in the resolution itself that it'd be transmitted to suite 300 versus 200? I believe when they announced themselves, the representative said they're at suite 300 at 1135M. They are. I will make that change. Either huh. I don't think so. She's got it changed in the original. Any other questions? Um, just for information, this is currently in the budget, so this is not an addition to the budget that we um, approved several months ago. Uh, it it was in there, and we we built it in in case we got to this point. So, call it call it all, please. Camp. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Cook. Yes. Emery. Yes. Eskridge. Yes. Fellers. Yes. Gaylor Baird. Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Item twenty three is the interlocal agreement between the city and county for the Joint Processing Division to update and revise the Information Services Division and the ISPC and to provide for budgets, cost distribution, billings, projects, and other matters. Introduced by Gaylor Baird. So moved. Second. Second by Trent. Trent. Uh, I have the pleasure of serving on the IS committee and uh, we painstakingly went through every single word in this, in this agreement. So um, it's, a, it's uh, well thought out and I'm happy to support it. 
that, since you updated certain words, what has changed in the IT world <laughs> in the last 20 years? So. This, is why you put the, this is why you put the red line copy in your packet so you can okay. take a look at that yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Given the ever-changing climate in the IT world, it's probably amazing that we made yeah, 15 years. Yeah, that we didn't have to go back and review this somewhere in that 15 years, and it's probably a good thing we did it today. So, uh, call the roll, please. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. Ordinances third reading, item 24 is amending section 2.42.040 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to the divisions of the Urban Development Department to restrict the authority of the Urban Development Department by requiring that any acquisition of residential property having value exceeding $50,000 for which the source of funding is community improvement financing be approved by resolution of the City Council introduced by Fellers. So moved. Second. Second by Roy. Discussion? Call roll. Yes. Christensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gayla Baird? Yes. Motion carried 7 to 0. Item 25 is amending Title I of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to general provisions to create a new Chapter 1.30 sale of city real property introduced by Fellers. So moved. Second. Second by Roy. Discussion? Jonathan? Yeah. Well, uh, an earlier version of this, of legislation covering the sale of city property uh, came to us a month or two ago. We were not so welcoming at that time. It did not provide for any council oversight and included a category of pre-approved projects that were in, was uh, those that are in redevelopment areas. We were not comfortable with that as well. I, however, did not expect to see something back, <laughs> and yet, here it was. Uh, the, there was a problem with this that was also a problem with that one, and that is a lack of supporting information when it appeared on our agenda. And that was frustrating because um, this is something I think our Urban Development Department is interested in and, and uh, it would help their processes, and we didn't have any supporting documentation about what sales had taken place and what the timelines had been and whether or not this really would provide a benefit. Um, we finally got some of that information Friday. I appreciate the law department pushing to, to get some of that to us. Um, and uh, that was helpful, finally, to see that and, and gave a better context for this, this ordinance. Um, uh, I do think there are a variety of other ways that this could be done that would streamline the process and still provide oversight. Um, but this is what's before us. I'm willing to give this a try and see how it goes, and maybe it will help out in some circumstances. Um, it may avoid confusion in the financing process and uh, help somebody who's a first-time home buyer get a house. So I'll support it. Trent. I appreciate City Law working with me, Rick Payo and Tim C and, and Jeff, uh, you know, coming up with a compromise. It's something that I think makes sense and will work for the community for many years to come. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think I'm, I'm similar to, to Jonathan in, in this regard of, of liking simplicity and liking to have a, a kind of a, a go-to way of, of doing things. And this, this kind of presents us with an exception. But hearing uh, the explanations of, of situations where this has been a real need, uh, for me, is, is a good reason to have an exception. And I think rather than then do it on an individual per cases basis coming back and seeking an exception at the time to go ahead and have this in place makes sense. Any other comments? Um, one of the things I'm most proud about uh, about being part of this body is that when we have issues where we decide that we're not going to vote for something, in most cases somebody takes it upon themselves to adopt or work on legislation to make it all work. Um, I appreciate Trent doing that in this case. There are many others up here who have done that in other times. So it's not it's not usually a case where we just turn something down and then just say, "I'll oh, forget it." So I'm appreciative that you went forward with the with uh, both pieces of legislation. Legislation, call roll. Cam. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Cook. Yes. Emery. Yes. Eskridge. Fellers. Yes. Gaylor Baird. Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. 
Item 26 is text amendment 14013 amending section 27.63.160 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to special permits for excavation and stone milling to allow stone milling as an accessory use to an excavation operation and to eliminate stone milling as a separate permitted use. Introduced by Fellers. So moved. Second. Second by Roy. Discussion? John. Well, I'd just like to make a comment on this. The entity that's involved here is very responsible. I just hope over time that we do have our health department monitor the situation and ensure that there's no uh, harm that he uh, evolves or emits to the neighboring areas. I know that this has been an undeveloped area, so that people moving into that vicinity would be new residents and understand the operation is there, but at the same time, we want to make sure that, uh, depending on future technology and everything, that this operation is conducted in a, a safe and non-hazardous manner. Any other comments? Call roll. Camp. Yes. Christensen. Yes. Cook. Yes. Emery. Yes. Eskridge. Yes. Fellers. Yes. Gaylor Baird. Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. First reading are items 27 through 29. Resolutions on first reading are items 30 through 36. Our pending ones are items 37 through 41. Mr. Chair, I'd move for adjournment and also wish everyone a happy and safe and memorable Veterans Day next week. And we'll see you again in two weeks on November 17th. And go vote. And go vote. And go vote. Second. And thank you to uh, all of the veterans. Seconded by Roy. Call the roll, please. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Cook? Yes. Emery? Yes. Eskridge? Yes. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Are you guys basically?